got a good thing going. Come on, come on. If you think we're gonna make it, better hang on to yourself. Hey, hello, Real Delvey. Hello, Reading X. Hello, my winter. Hello, Radio. Are we live on? We are. We are live on. Oh, let me turn the volume down on that. Gone. No volume. We need no volume on Le Tic Le Toc. Hello, Le Tic Le Toc. Hello to Vessel. Uh, he Hello there. Hi, Aunt Jenny. I will take it. Wait, to Vessel. Uh, tell me who it is. <laughs> That's Ezra. I didn't know that Ezra is to Vessel. Uh, I probably should know that. Hi. Wait, where am I still hearing something? I'm, oh my God, all of these, all these roses. Thank you for the roses, honeys. Wait, I'm hearing something back and I don't know. Let me see. That it. There, boom, that was it. Nespot, you genius. You wonder, you marvel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, gang. Hello, my Ezra. Hello, Monster Bay. Hello, Burmo. Hello, Reading Axe. Who else is over here? Let me put on my glasses so that I can see who is in the house on the Le Tic Le Toc. Mommy Brig, Dan's Abyss. Hello. Hello, Norvina. Hello, Cora Pika Kurda. Hello, Nycor Sounds. Hello, Mercy's Diva Cup. You're amazing too. That's a great name too. Um, hello, Pacify Yuka. Love the new support. Amazing. Hello, Zed is back for more. Hello, Silver Dragon. Hello, Ois. Very nice. Look at all of this wonderful crew. Hi, gang. Hello, hello. So nice. How are you? I am good. You know, I had a cold starting, how long ago is it now? Oh my God, is it 10 days ago? Something like that. And I'm still congested. And I'm feeling fine. I'm running around and sleeping through the night, all that. But I still have the congestion situation. And I have been running like a chicken with my head cut off as of right now because I am cooking for Passover. So I am the one in my family who generally hosts this monster Passover Seder. And I usually do both nights, but this year I'm only doing one night because on Friday at the crack of dawn, I take off for two weeks in Japan and a little more than a week in Vietnam. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be out of action. So I've got packing, cooking, craziness going on over here, but my wonderful respite is getting to come and talk to you guys and doing my bird mom. Hello, my nest bot. How was your weekend? Anything exciting? Tell me. I didn't. I don't even know what you're talking about. Ooh, I want to see. Okay. Dude, I love it. I want to see. Oops. Yeah. Now they can hear me. Yeah. They don't, yeah. Um, and it was freaking cold yesterday. I thought it was going to be nice. And then it rained, apparently. And then it didn't rain. And then it was 70. It's, I was all, I had this wildly social, wildly social weekend. I saw old friends, new friends, work friends, childhood friends, college friends. I was like all over the place in, uh, in between like everything else. It was just a Jenga kind of weekend. It was great. It was beautiful. I was so happy. Uh, wait, how hard did I laugh making Farah's lines for April 1st? What lines did they release for April 1st? You guys, you have to understand, I'm, I'm bananas. I have been totally not on the socials for a few days now. So I don't know what's been released. I don't know which lines. I know how much fun I had recording everything, but I don't know which lines were released. Hello, Dave. Get let me know. Who? Hey, oh my goodness. Yeah, you're, yeah, uh, there's. Ah, uh, Marissa is getting ready. Oh, this is great. Yeah, justice reigns from my kitchen right now is more like it. 
I definitely like rockets. Most definitely. Total Jenny. Totally Jenny for sure. Yes. Yes. I am. I actually tonight I will be raining gefilte fish from above. I'm making the gefilte fish, which we've done. Didn't we? We did a stream with me making gefilte fish, didn't we, Ness? So you're going to have to pick some up because I, I have a feeling I have so much. They delivered it last night to make it. And so I'm going to be, I'm going to be swimming through the gefilte fish <laughs> later tonight. I think it'll be elbow deep that the loose sleeves to get in there. You can't, you'll butcher the spelling. Gefilte fish is almost like a French fish croquette, like a cannelle, but it's an Eastern European, very Jewish preparation of a, of an, a fish croquette. And they're delicious, delicious, like beloved uh, treats, but uh, it's a ton of work to make them. So I got all the fish, got all the ingredients, ready to go on it, but yeah. We got, I got some cooking to do tonight. Absolutely, my pleasure. I'm happy to explain. Um, and my poor Abe, Abe, who is moderating the TikTok chat. Thank you, my Abe. Abe got sick from me about a week ago now, and is in the in suffering from it. So now, yeah, because uh, you were exposed like a week ago, and now, and, and yeah, it's bad. <laughs> so maybe it's longer than 10 days. Maybe I've been sick for like 12 days. Oh God, crazy guys. I hate when that happens. Wait, how often do I record new Overwatch voice lines? Uh, it depends on how busy the Blizzard gang is. I would say when it's crazy busy, it's every few weeks. And when it's less busy, it's every few months. Depends on what's going on with them. Um, but I was, oh, I'm so glad you're recovering. Um, but I was going to say, I'm going to do either when I'm in Japan or when I'm in Vietnam or maybe twice, I'm going to be doing an AMA on TikTok. So if you want to find out when that is happening, because everybody's been asking me all of these voiceover questions and voice line questions and Overwatch questions and Blizzard questions and uh, Avatar The Last Airbender questions and all these like wonderful things. And I want to talk to you guys about all of that. Uh, that'll be at the AMAs. If you want to know when that happens, join the family discord. The link is in the chat if you're on Twitch and it's above on TikTok and it's right over at the title. Join the discord and that is how you know what's happening when I will keep you posted. But this right now is going to be an Ask Bird Mom. This is a, a real talk advice stream where we are talking about things that are going on in your lives. I'm giving you the disclaimer. I am not a doctor. I am in no way a medical professional. I have absolutely no medical training. I am simply a trusted adult who is here. I am sending you all of this love and good energy. And I just want to be here as a sounding board and a signpost and someone to help you and guide you in a, the right direction, in a good direction. So obviously, if you are feeling on the edge, if you are feeling like you need help. I always encourage you strongly to get medical assistance. I encourage you to get therapy. I love therapy. And if you're in an emergency situation, please, please call. If you're in the United States, 911. And if you're in another country, the emergency number of your country. Uh, I always say that. Um, I wanted to start this because I was thinking about this disclaimer and say this. So earlier today, Mickey, my kid, for those of you who don't know, who is 14, was asking me if people his age ever come on Bird Mom to talk. And I said, yes, they do sometimes. And he said, you know, that's really strange that people would come on. He goes, you know, that, that people would want to talk to you like, you know, I have you to talk to. Did you have people to talk to when you were my age? And I told him that I did because I did. I had, you know, my parents and I had a good relationship and I was able to talk to them. But I realized what I didn't have when I was Mickey's age was I didn't have any mentors. I didn't have any adults in my life who were in the place that I wanted to be when I grew up. Like, you know, I had images in my head of what I wanted my life to look like, but I didn't know anyone who was in any version of what that looked like. So I didn't have people like that to talk to. And I feel like having had people like that 
would have been invaluable just as people to bounce ideas off of, to ask for direction. You know, it's like, you don't ask somebody who's from Pittsburgh how to get to Paris. You ask someone who's in Paris, how do you get to Paris? So while I'm not a medical professional, I would love for you guys to know that I'm here with like love and great intent and wanting to be your soundboard that way. If I can be a mentor, if I can be of help, I'm, I'm here for it. So that was what my thought was to start off today. All right. Our first person who's coming on is a longtime friend of the family, and that is Emily. Mwah. Emily, come on down. Mentors can be such a guiding light, right? I know. I can't imagine. Like if I had had at that age someone who I could ask questions about being afraid about becoming a performer or about what being an artist would look like or what the trajectory is like or what I should expect or how much rejection is normal or like I didn't have anyone who could sort of guide me that way. The, there are things that it would have it would have really saved me a lot of suffering and taught me ways to be that would have been really helpful. So that was my thought on that when Mickey was asking me this question. Wait, let me see. Hey, how are you? Hold on. I need to like, <laughs> I haven't used Zoom in so long that like, whatever, it's fine. My pronouns have changed, whatever. What are um, my, wait, what are, what are your pronouns now? They're just they, them now. You, they, them? Fair enough. Yeah. All right, my <laughs> Emily. I love it. Are you still Emily? Do we have a new? Yeah, yeah okay, I'm still good. Emily. Yeah. Fair enough. Love it. Hello, honey. How are you? Uh, you know, it's, it's going. I like okay. climbed out of a depressive episode yesterday. That was fun. Like at work. Um. <laughs> okay. What did you do to climb out? What did you do? To... I, was, I was talking to our, one of my ASMs and it's funny cause she's like new at the store, but like, she just like immediately like fit right in with our team and stuff. So yeah. So that was pretty helpful. I mean, excellent. Yeah, just uh, getting out of the house and stuff. So. Oh, good. Okay, so you got out of the house. Yeah. So you talked to someone who was helpful, who was trusted. Was there anything yeah. else that was like a a good pull you out? I mean, I did go to the gym yesterday, and there was like no one there, so that was good. So you did great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So listen to you taking care of yourself. Check you out. Good yeah. job, Emily. <laughs> Good work. Okay. Those are the right moves. Yeah, yeah. totally. The gym, but, a trusted uh, person to talk to. A little. That's great. Outside. Good going. Yeah. Obviously, my question is about work. Um, Just to give you the rundown, since about... Gosh, even during the holiday season, the uh, schedule has just been okay. awful. And I know the economy isn't doing well, banking stuff, all of that. Like, okay. I know that. Well, tell everyone but, um, who's watching what you do because people don't know. So I'm a part-time sales associate at Vans, which, like, sounds cool at first. Yes. Until you start working there. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> like like VF isn't exactly the greatest corporation to be working under, I would say. Um so yeah, it's just um great times, but essentially for about 3 months now, I've been getting anywhere between 4 and 8 hours uh f per work week and I've gotten paychecks that are like $120. And like I, I literally cannot. Like it's so just uh exhausting. Yeah. Like I don't know how else to put it, because I used to be able to save money with this job and stuff, but I don't know how I'm supposed to like save twenty percent of my paycheck or whatever. If you're only getting a hundred like, when it's two hundred dollars. Yeah. No, like yeah. whatever. And so like it's just like that's part of what like has been contributing to and they only can give you four to eight hours lately. a week yeah and i like 
called up HR and I was like, hey, like, I can't keep doing this. Like, it's literally affecting my mental health and things, like, outside of work. And, yeah. <laughs> and then I had a talk with my district manager and he was like, well, like, like, it's your availability. And then he gave me, like, some, like, businessy, like, e explanation. Like, I don't know what's going on with the company. Okay. And it's like... I'm not stupid. I see the stock report on VF coming up every day, like on my Google feed. Like I know what's going okay. on. Like the company's not doing well. <laughs> are there other people? But How many other sales associates are there in the store? Um, there's eleven, including me. And like how do they all have more hours than you? Or no, everyone's pretty much getting the same amount of hours. It's Oh yeah, it's real nice. And I opened up my availability um, after I had my review, which was also uber disappointing because it was like, oh, yeah, I gave you this feedback, but I also essentially gave everyone else the same feedback. And I'm like, that's not constructive. <laughs> huh. Huh. So yeah, that's been uh, real fun. Okay. But yeah, just... All of that stuff. And I've been trying to job search. I've applied to like at least 15 places. And they're not even like crazy positions or anything like that. They're like produce clerk or like host, uh, bar back, things like that. Very okay. basic, like entry level. And no one responds. I'll like call up and be like, hey, like, I'm super interested in this. If you could get back to me about an interview, like here's my phone number, all of that stuff, yada, yada. And I had Good. like an interview with Sprouts. Like they let me schedule an interview with them. Mm -hmm. and the guy was like, oh, like I would totally hire you, but like all of our, uh, um, all of our departments are filled up right now. And I was like, why am I here? Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like okay. he would keep my application on record but it's not like super helpful that like it still stays up on their website or whatever and that I'm allowed to schedule that interview when their departments are filled and stuff so okay yeah and like oh, yeah I like just I don't even know what to do to be honest and like I'd go on Craigslist or something but last time I did that it was either really shady stuff or construction work okay and yeah okay. <laughs> like that's pretty much it and I'd rather focus on like because I'm trying to switch community colleges I'd rather focus on that and like learning how to drive like those things right now than having to worry about like having the smallest paycheck so on earth what is or keeping you like that. from focusing on learning to drive and switching community colleges well it's not it's not like it's pulling my focus away like i'm still dealing with that stuff it's just like work adds this extra stress and then i'll get depressed and then i don't want to get out of bed so it's like this domino effect and like, I've been trying to handle it and stuff, and I've, like, talked to my mom about it, all of that. It's like, I, like, I can't keep doing this. And then I tried to, I tried to transfer locations to the mall, because we have two locations okay. in town. I have to take an hour commute by bus. So that doesn't work? To work. That totally doesn't work. And the mall is 15 minutes away, and I told my district manager this. I'm like, dude... I like I'm it takes too much energy for me to get to work and I've had like two hour shifts and stuff where I have to take the yeah, bus you get like, two hours two of commuting for a two hour shift that doesn't make any sense no of course not yeah no yeah and I brought I brought that up with my assistant manager and she's like uh working on it and stuff and been telling our store manager to not do that because it's inconvenient and I figure him of all people would understand because he drives from Temecula to San Diego County 
to, <laughs> to co come to work. <laughs> and I don't know if you're familiar with that I, commute at I'm all. I'm not at all. At all. But it's it's bad. My but only yeah. thought with this is like I remember once I remember once when I was struggling on an apartment search. I I was seeking out the perfect apartment, the perfect, perfect, perfect apartment. Yeah. And I had spent months looking to no avail. I had like this exact list of what I wanted. And I was looking and looking and looking. And finally I met this broker and I saw this apartment and I said to him, no, it's really not that great. And he goes, well, it's really good for the price point. And I said, you don't understand. I have seen over a hundred apartments <laughs> and I know what I'm looking for. And I blah, blah, blah. And he looked House at me. House hunters. <laughs> and he said to me, he's like, you know, Jen, there are no victims. There are only volunteers. And at the time I was like, you know, offended like and whatever, but, but I thought about that many times over the years since that happened. I mean, it's decades since that happened. And he was a hundred percent right. He was a hundred percent right. And I can't tell you how many times. And when you tell me about this manager who's, driving from Temecula to San to San was San Diego, San, Santa Cruz that would like uh, Escondido. I like doxed myself, Esca but whatever. There are I no just... victims. <laughs> there are only volunteers. Yeah. And that is a little bit of what we should talk about. Because now in your ideal world, what how many hours would you want to work for? What size paycheck do you want to go home with? What I mean, what would be like... your ideal? This sounds like really minuscule, but like, like at minimum, I want just 16 hours a week again. Like, so yeah, no more four I'd, to eight, I, you need 16 hours. Yeah. And I okay. would just like, like, I like even $300 would be better than like the $200 one to me. Yeah, like, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Just all right. And does it all and, have to be from one source or could it continue? It, if you were if you were getting the money supplemented from another gig, would it be and would you still want to stay for four to eight hours here? Or are you just like disgusted with them and ready to move on? It's like like I think this situation has improved a little bit because I did open up my availability a little bit okay. more. So I used to just like work mornings and stuff or like afternoons. He he would never schedule me afternoons, but anyways, um <laughs> like I, I I don't know. But okay. I like thought about getting a second job, but like at the same time, I don't wanna feel like a chicken running around with its head cut off. Okay. And I thought about quitting and it's like, well, I don't wanna do that because then where am I gonna get income from? And I've thought about even applying for like partial disability because of my mental health Okay. instead of like trying to get a second job because I know that I could work a part time and have disability, all that stuff. Um, okay. But yeah, it's just like, like I'm applying to all these other part time positions, but literally no one's like like offering and stuff like I could work two jobs if I wanted to but no one's like right now no yeah. one's fighting right this minute no, no one's fighting yeah and it I sounds even like... like you're taking all of this very personally though it sounds like you're taking mm -hmm. the not getting the hours personally it sounds like you're taking the not hearing back from where you're applying personally not really it's more like it's just like exhausting like because I went through it before, before I got hired, I remember applying to like 30 places and like my cat just died. So that was fun uh, when that happened. Um, and it's just job searching. I f feel like people just normalize that so much, like, oh, like 30 places, like at least you got like two responses. And I'm like, what? Like... <laughs> Like, what's going to happen when I come out of college with, like, a certificate or something like that is another thing I think about because of the job search. But you know what? The economy's not going to stay like that forever, so I do have to keep my head up a little bit with that. So, yeah. 
but there is I don't know always always enough work for you if you're just looking to make a few dollars it just sometimes yeah. takes a little more time than you might want it to there is always enough for you. don't you don't take it for you sorry. no what are you sorry don't be sorry someone keeps slamming stuff outside oh, i hate that okay <laughs> i live in the city i'm with you i hear you um yeah <laughs> but yeah you cannot take the realities of a job search and in this case it's just a gig search you're like this is not a career search this is just no. a job search this is just like a source you're thinking 16 hours this isn't a lot of hours you've started applying and you haven't heard back 15 yeah. is not that many submissions i know it sounds like a lot but it's really not no it's not no. it was like in the span of about a month i think though so yeah i but, think you can yeah. trust that you will absolutely be in the right place at the right time and put the right application in and get more hours. You are not looking for some massive career move for, you know, yeah. 40 hours a week and blah, blah, blah. No. For you to just be wanting a little bit more money and a few more hours, which is all it is. This is so eminently doable. Yeah. So move your attention with this, my Emily. Move your attention instead of making it about what you don't have. Because right now it's, I don't want to make myself crazy. I don't have enough hours. He's not getting back to me. They're not getting back to me. You're putting all of your energy on the knots and you could just as easily choose every time you do it to go, ah, 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 mm. world is my oyster. What do I want to do? Let yeah. me apply there. World is my oyster. What do I want to do? I want to go there. Ooh, that'd be a fun thing to do for 10 hours a week. Let me go try this there. Oh, that. You, you absolutely are in control of that. Yeah. You are in charge of where you put that focus. Yeah. Only I mean, I will say at least I do have a job right now. Like that is a positive thing. Cause I have a job. Don't. I have a job yeah. at a cool store that, that gives me, that gives me four to eight hours and is trying to accommodate my schedule. You yeah. could and then because you're telling me about the review that everyone got exactly the same review and you're telling me that everyone gets the same number of hours. So there's nothing personal no. and there's nothing about you performing badly or you having done anything wrong. It's just there's circumstances that are beyond your control yeah. at this store with this district, with this that's beyond your control. So don't put your sense of well-being onto circumstances that have nothing to do with you. You're the only one who gets to control how you're doing and how you're doing is you're grateful for your 48 hours and you're getting 16. Like that's, that's a choice you can make. Yeah. I will say it's like, um, because I was told that the reason that the schedule looked the way it was is because everyone's uh, like availability was limited. And I did tell them, I was like, well, if you communicate that to the team, like, I'm sure some of us would open up like our availability more so we can cover those times and stuff. Because like... Because that's what my district manager told me. And it's like, well, I was I was never told this, so I didn't know. Yeah. Right. I, it's, and I don't know. They kind of do that. And I don't know if it's just Vans or, like, just our... Oh, you're frozen. Is Emily frozen for everybody? Emily, you just froze on me. Okay, let me see what's going on in chat. Oi. Nespot. Oh, there it is. Oh, there you are. Okay, good. Okay. Good. That was, uh, I don't know. We have a storm rolling in. Maybe uh, Cox is being funny. I don't know. Oh my goodness. <laughs> right? <laughs> Crazy. But um, I don't know. They don't communicate what's going on with the business as a whole. And 
like sure we don't have any direct influence on what happens like up at the top and all of that stuff but well, whatever's going on up at the top has nothing to do with no, the it hours doesn't. of how this i mean think of how many van stores there are in california alone there's a lot there's yeah. a lot but um yeah, they don't tell us about, like, the schedule stuff. It feels very, like, hush-hush for some reason. And I'm like, just tell us what's going on so that we can, like, adapt. Yeah. Sweetheart, none of that pertains to you at all. Like, no. none of it has anything to do with you. So for you to hinge your state of being on what happens there is, is you not taking as good care of yourself as you can. And you yeah. know how to take care of yourself. You know to go to the gym. You know to get outside. You know to talk to people. You know to come here and talk to me. You know, like, so as someone who knows how to take good care of yourself, another way to take good care of yourself is to say, okay, that's not where I'm focusing. I'm focusing here. Like, yeah. I mean, like, for a while, I was like, okay, I'm just going to show up and, like, go through the motions and then leave. Um, Yeah. It's just, uh, yeah, I don't know. And, like, I tried to apply for, like, like the part-time floor supervisor on a work day. If anyone's familiar with that website, uh, it's used for, like, uh, like work places. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, okay. but, like, they're like, oh, like, we're not filling that position right now. And I was like, ah, <laughs> why is it still up? And I'm like, okay, whatever. It's what it is, I guess. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, who knows why it's still up? It doesn't even matter why it's still up. No. This means that there's something better for you. Like, yeah. this means this is a moment for you to trust that there is some better option that just hasn't availed itself yet. And so all you can do is stay in tune with this like more, more, more vibe so that the right thing, you and, and the right thing can collide, you know? Yeah. I just, um, I kind of wonder like if there's anything I could do to like make myself feel more like appealing to, uh, like recruiters or not recruiters, but like people look be looking at the applications. I'm assuming it's managers and stuff at like these different places, like to stand out or like mostly, mostly be excited about opportunities. Because again, what you what you want is just a gig work right now. So you're super yeah. articulate. You're articulate, you're attractive, you're smart, you're able to like, you know, you're, you're able to present, you're obviously good at what you do because they're trying to accommodate you, even though it sounds like they don't have their schedule together. <laughs> so, right, right. Which has nothing to do with you. No. So that's... I think the more confident oh. you are and the more certain you are that like the right thing is coming to you that will make you very attractive to anyone who speaks to you. Yeah. Like that's, you know, and you're a college student. Like you don't have to say that you like also are like a, a rocket scientist and a brain no. surgeon in your spare time. And that's why you want to work at Sprouts. Like you could just no. be like your lovely, funny, charming self. I mean, I just and, told him yeah. like, I literally just want like, the full part-time hours I was told I would get and that was yeah. pretty much it <laughs> like yeah yes 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 I think that you are you are here for a situation that suits you yeah and you are you are not pleased with a situation that doesn't suit you yeah. so you're looking for a situation that suits you can they adjust the situation to suit you which were the terms of how you entered into this this arrangement you don't have to leave until you have something else and i bet yeah. you're gonna have something else any minute like this I, is one of those things of just being persistent 
Yes. <laughs> yes. No, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. De- but, but, um... And just decide it. They always need people to do the things that you're you're saying that you're applying for. They're always. And yeah. if they don't for these 15, then the 16th they will, or the 21st they will, or the 27th they will. Like, it's just... Yeah. And I don't yeah. know, like, um, if there's any other, like, websites I could use besides, like, Indeed, or, like, ZipRecruiter, Glassdoor, because, uh, not gonna lie, for my area, it's a lot of, like, nursing stuff which i obviously can't apply for like at all okay (laughs) yeah i just i don't know if there's any other like job websites if anyone has suggestions that are like better for looking for just like part-time work like that or anything yeah if anyone Uh, has it wants to put in the chat on either tiktok or twitch sites for gig work that yeah, would be great. I have no I don't, idea. I don't have TikTok, so uh, <laughs> never yeah. mind. Just on Twitch. <laughs> I'm just Although like, you yeah. know what? <laughs> if you want to put it, if you know it in TikTok, I want to put it in the chat. And uh, and Abe, if you can lift it and send it to Nest to put in the chat or to forward to Emily, that would be great. Can I do send remote that work? I can do remote work, but the thing about it is that I don't want to, like, sit on my ass all day inside of my room. Like, I do like getting outside. I mean, it could work for a little bit, though. Mm. I I could look for, like, a data entry specialist or some thing like that. I don't know what other remote work there is outside of that. Streaming? Um, <laughs> but... Well, yeah. it sounds like you could do more research about what you want to do. It sounds like you can focus on the driving. It sounds like you can focus on switching to the different school. It sounds like you can envision yeah. yourself at a gig that gives you enough hours and enough money. It sounds like you can keep applying to more places. Yeah. You have a lot to, so when you say you don't know what to do, there's a lot to do. Yeah. I mean, I guess I am doing the things. It's just a matter of waiting. It won't yeah. be very long. I mean, this is this is. Oh, look, Lumi's saying there's a bunch of remote work you could do. Are you reading stuff now? Yeah, I'm reading it. Okay. No target though. Mm-mm. Okay. We'll <laughs> yeah. see. So look, you're picking and choosing. You're deciding where you want to be. Emily, you're going to be fine with this. Yeah. You know, like a, a lot of times we all want to just wiggle our nose and have everything just happen. But sometimes it's really worth it to have to learn to like, all right, keep getting back at it. Keep throwing more darts. Keep throwing more shit at the wall. Like that's just yeah part of the game sometimes to figuring things out. I don't, I don't think that this is a, some yeah. somewhere you should put any worry. I think you can have total confidence that this is fine. You are fine. The situation is resolving itself as we speak. Like, envision it happening and working for you. It's definitely working for you. Just don't even entertain the thought of it not. Of course it is. It's just, which is it going to be? Maybe you haven't even thought of it yet. Yeah, hold on. I'm like, read LinkedIn. Okay. I have a LinkedIn, but I don't like really touch it or anything because it's, I've, yeah, I don't know. I'm seeing, you know, somebody (laughs) on TikTok. Hold on. I'm looking at the TikTok chat. Somebody on TikTok. Oh, look at that. Mama Lamb just wrote their great internships that can be paid that will lead to great jobs. Yeah. So you could look for that too. That's possible. Yeah. Like, (laughs) I don't want to sound wishful, but my ideal internship would be something like uh, sound tech stuff, but I doubt So go that. apply for those. Yeah, I just, I don't know. There's like one place that I could think of, but that's pretty much it. Go apply. Yeah. Go apply. How great. You have a lot to do now. You think you got this? Yeah, I think so. As long as I don't fall back into my depression, we should be good. Um, <laughs> Keep manage yeah. your attention. This is the 
don't, don't, don't allow yourself to go down the rabbit hole of, of the not having thoughts in this situation. There's so much you can do. You're in charge of so much and, and it's just there for you to take. Yeah. Yeah. Not for this. This is, there are times in life where it can, things can feel very daunting and feel very, but this you have in hand. This you yeah. have in hand. There's there's so many ways it could go. You can handle this. Absolutely. Absolutely. My Emily, I'm sending you a big hug. Will you let me know? Will you let me know? Yeah, I'll let happens? you know. I'll, okay. I'll keep you up to date as best I can. Yeah. I mean, I will say my coworker did ask me to cover their one day on Wednesday. So, uh, yeah. So there you go. <laughs> so there you go okay so what so that's a four hour shift or what one to eight oh they, a, look at that i didn't hear yeah. one to eight okay so yeah. they, okay so you have your 16 weeks that well let's you got see. your 16 I hours as four hours six what's six plus eight sorry 14 oh <laughs> 13 you're hours. great you, you yeah. got this you're great good look at this Okay. Yeah. There we go. Th this problem is already solved. Make this, make this just solved in your head. Yeah. yeah don't give your peace to this. Delvi is saying, Delvi is so good. You've got this pain in the nut, the butt, but you'll find something. Of course, of course. Right. I love everything Delvi is saying. That's great. Checking Thank you, real Delvi. Specialize in placing interns. Yeah. Huh. Very cool. All right, I'm sending you a big hug and a kiss. Let me know how it goes. Yeah. Okay. Mwah. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. You got this. Bye, hun. Bye. Bye. It's so funny. Those first job hunts are so daunting. And then you realize, like, oh, no, it's fine. You can always go get a gig. Getting a gig is something you can always figure out. It's just sometimes you've got to throw more stuff at the wall than you planned on. Sometimes it takes a little more time. Sometimes finding the right fit takes a minute. But I'm happy that Emily knows exactly the things to do to raise energy, like, and where to focus. Okay. Our next person to talk to is, oh, you know what? I want to, you know what? I'm going to tell you guys this amazing story first, because it's sort of, it sort of relates. It sort of relates because I wanted to tell this. So on Friday night, I went to this benefit for my kids' elementary school. And, you know, I live in Manhattan. And so uh, my kid went to elementary school in the West Village. And so it's lots of very groovy, arty parents and lots of rock and rollers and lots of creatives and and so like there was a very cool crowd of parents who all sent their kids there. And for this benefit, whenever we would do the benefit, they would get people who were performers and musicians and some of them were very famous musicians to put together a band and do be the benefit band each time. And so I was in the benefit band several times and it was really fun and really rock and roll. And usually there's someone who would own like a fabulous rock and roll venue downtown and we would get to do the benefit there. So like there you'd be like playing with famous musicians on a stage in like the kind of place you'd only fantasize about playing in. And it just, it was a really great energetic thing to, you know, sing in this show. And one of my friends, who is a lawyer. He is this very straight laced, not doesn't love being a lawyer. He sort of has like a, like a creative soul that he hasn't fed as much as he, I think would like to. And he grew up with very by the book tiger parents, you know, do things exactly this way and did that. And now finds himself in his adulthood really looking for outlets to express himself. And to, you know, to, to sort of figure out who he is and who he wants to be. Even though he's like a successful lawyer, he wants to grow and wants to do more and be more. In the time that I've known him, he like 
became this incredible orator, public speaker, because he like went into school politics and became the head of the PTA and, and, and like was amazing. And I had no idea he had never done anything like this before, but he used this opportunity to learn how to command a crowd, how to speak to crowds, how to, how to negotiate these things. And it made him a better lawyer and it was very fulfilling. He then went on to write a book and he wrote this book and it was so, so good that he got this like publisher and he wound up doing a press circuit. He wound up doing the audio book of his own book. Like these are all things that he, as a grown up, as a dad, as an adult with a full-time job, like found these ways of developing himself and like figuring out who he was creatively. And now cut to this year, that this friend of mine, again, I'm telling you, like not a performer, asks to perform a song with the benefit band with like all of these rockers and him and he did it on friday night and if i tell you he was so freaking awesome he was fantastic and this is something that if you had told him a year ago or if you had told him three years ago that, oh, don't you worry, in a few years, you'll be the one singing, you'll be the one fronting the, all these rock stars in this band, in this nightclub in Manhattan, you, you middle-aged lawyer, whatever, on the, but he did it, but he did it. And so I'm telling you this story because I want you to realize that you have no idea what the avenues are for you, that if you take them, will lead you to grow in these amazing ways. And if you have some preconceived notion that growth is only available to you for this limited amount of time, and if you don't hit it by X, Y, Z age, or if you don't do it by the time, you know, you've got, you hit the fork in the road and you could take this road or that road and do this one. And if you didn't do it then, then you're never going to get to do None of this is true. It is all nonsense. There are always opportunities for you to try on new personae and to try new creative paths and to figure out more of who you are at any age, in any number of circumstances, you never know who you're going to become. So just keep following your muse and just keep taking these opportunities wherever they present themselves. I, I'm still like flying high for this friend of mine. Um, I just kept thinking what an amazing life lesson. Like if I, as a kid had seen, uh, you know, my dad suddenly step into this persona of like my father who always wanted, my father wanted to be David Lee Roth. That was always his thing. Like we would go to see a show. I went to go see Van Halen with my parents as a kid. And, and he, he like, I remember him jumping in the air and like, you know, kicking and what, what, can you imagine like my, my suburban dad, but in this case, the dad went and did it and like, he went and did it. So anyway, if you have the pull, the avenue will present itself, take it and don't shut yourself off to something just because you think that it somehow is done or you're too old or that time is behind you. It's all nonsense. Okay my motivational speech in between my calls. The next person up who has something to talk about with me is going to be Amanda. Hello, Amanda. Thank you, Nesbot. Wait, I want to see. I do, guys, will somebody in the chat please tell me which lines were released for April Fool's? What are the lines? Because I have been totally out to lunch. I have been working my brains out. Like, and I haven't even known I've had so much happening. Jan X represent. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thanks guys. So nice. Hey, Maddie Bailena. Hi, Rana Botari. We saved her fly, right. Flying high. Is that right? Flying high. Let's see, I want to see which line do we want me to say? What line do we want me to say? I'm looking. Oh, nastiness. Nastiness reigns from above. There we go. A little nastiness. It was justice reigns from the... Oh, rain justices from above. 
try and hit me. Oh, I think I remember that. Try and hit me. You won't. <laughs> that was a good one. Hope you like rockets. Oh, so good. Oh my gosh, guys, I remember recording those and we were cracking up. They were really funny. They were so good. Radio, your mom is starting a marine biology degree this year and she's 54. At, right, exactly. Can you imagine at 54, you're like, dude, I'm going to become a marine biologist. How fabulous is that? So good. It's so good. I love that. Let's see what else. Yeah, oh, I'm so glad those lines were released. Guys, so you have to remember, like I, when I record the voice lines, I record them all in like a batch and I'm not sure when they're releasing them or what they're releasing them for. So I'm super excited that those are the ones that were released. I'll have to hear how, which, which takes they used. But I, I've told you guys, like the Overwatch 2 voice lines have been the most fun to record because like we're just giggling in the booth. We're like cracking up with all the takes. So I'm so happy that they came off well. That's awesome. So good. Nespa, do we have Amanda? Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Sorry if I sound a little bit nervous. It's just my first time being on this and just like really excited. Welcome, welcome. It's so nice to meet you. I love your pink. Is it a diva sweatshirt? Yeah, it is because I'm I'm basically a, a diva main and also I'm a Mercy and Moira main. So you yeah. have excellent taste. Love your taste. Well, you, can tell, you can tell in the background that's why I got all the overwatch stuff. Totally. I love it. Oh, so nice. Hello. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah. Tell me what's going on. Um, the question I wanted to ask was basically because um I have um a boyfriend and um and yesterday was our three year anniversary. Happy um, anniversary. We have a freeze. What happened? <gasps> there you are. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but yeah we met through a dating app and okay. I got to know him and um we kept talking and I kind of was like catching feelings for him and like it was just like typical I think for me if like for me to just catch feelings is like I've been through like past relationships where like um either like they the they had loved me and then after a while they got sick of me and they dumped me or anything and they didn't really understand my feelings or my needs of anything because in my family my mom is like um the most caring person she's like kind of like a mama bear so she's really caring about me and um so like nobody really cared what what my mom and me wanted because like if somebody wanted to like a boy or one ex-boyfriend of mine he wanted me to hang out with him and he always said oh why don't you come to my place and my mom's like no either he comes to the house or you guys go to the mall and he never understood that because that was my mom's one security priority and like she wasn't okay with that and like um she had told me she's like how did you me my one at well two of my exes I met through an old uh, dating app but okay. she kind of freaked out on me after I had um, met them through that. And she said, no more dating apps because um, she didn't know like who these guys were, where they're from. And she didn't know if they were like murderers or, or weird people that would kidnap me. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So basically that was her one concern. And I, I know because her being the mom bear, she's really caring about me because I was like, um, I'm, uh, I'm autistic and I also got Asperger's syndrome so that's why she's really like protective yeah and, careful yeah so it's just like she just wants the best for me and she wants me to like kind of learn anything that it is of like life lessons so like that way I'm I am like learning this stuff and knowing what are the signs of anything of of that or at all so it's like I understand the signs but like how I had met him was through the dating app. We right. talked. I gave him my um, I had given my my Instagram, my Snapchat, so that way I could talk with him still. Um, 
because I didn't know when he was going to be on the dating app and I didn't know when I was going to be on the dating app. So we just exchanged the socials and, and talked that way. And I had talked to him and talked to him and I was just like catching my feelings. And I had posted on my, my, uh, my TikTok that like, I was like, uh, in like these little videos, I was like, I was like, I'm catching feelings for this guy. And a, and a good friend of mine that was on TikTok, she told me, she's like, she's like, She's like, go, go get your man, go get him. And I was like, okay, I will, I will. And I, I messaged him and I said, I said, you know what, like, I like you, like, like you. And, he, and I was like, in a way. And he's like, oh, I, I like you too. I'm like, and like, if uh, officially, like, I had, like the, that was like an April first of 2020 during the pandemic. Okay. So as soon as um, the next day rolled around, which was April 2nd, um, I basically asked him, I was like, so does this make us boyfriend and girlfriend? He said, yeah. And after that, that's been <laughs> history. So every time it comes up to April 2nd, it's our anniversary. And yeah. I was, get so excited because it's like, and this nice, sweet, caring guy that loves me for me, doesn't care if I'm, I'm a big, huge um gamer and anime nerd <laughs> and this whatever this is great this is <laughs> great because you're basically he's basically a gamer and he likes wrestling so it's like eh, there's perfect where does he live so fine with each other's like common interests and things so <laughs> does he live close by um he lives kind of like close by to sacramento and I'm like almost close to um almost close to Fresno. So it's like I think if I were to go up to Sacramento, I probably would take me about maybe like an hour or two to get up there to Sacramento, which is like so So close. So that's not far. That's pretty yeah. close. Yeah, but it's just like it's just scary because like I keep telling him I'm like I'm like there's gotta be a time to like introduce you to my family because it's like I I love him, but it's yeah. scary to introduce him to my family because, like, my mom being the one that has to approve of anybody I date, and then also my brother because he wants to make sure that this that my boyfriend treats me as a as a as a queen, a princess, and like a person that would be like on his pedestal of affection and everything. It's like I like it. He already does. It's like he basically like right. He'll text me. Every single day, we'll talk on the phone for a while, and like, it's all that. But it's just like, I never know when is the right time to like introduce him to them because it's like. So when did hard. mom say no apps? Um, I think in two thousand in eighteen, I think, or two thousand yeah, two thousand eighteen of December, I think after that, she said no more dating apps. But then I think as soon as 2020 was rolling in and everything I was like I have it like I had like a weird strange off sensation to be like I know something's gonna happen I'm guessing it's gonna be a while for me to find something but I'm just gonna do this because like like I just need something to do and just like maybe I find relationship during the pandemic and whatever so I did it hit off well and here so when I they am hear you <laughs> talking on the phone or talking to someone or see you communicating and writing who do they think you're talking to um sometimes i because i'm i'm nervous sometimes so i always tell them like oh i'm talking to a friend so i basically don't tell them i'm talking to my boyfriend of three years i just tell them oh i'm talking to a friend because i'm scared to like basically just outright say be like oh it's my boyfriend because like my mom would just basically tell me she's like you what boyfriend how did you guys meet? And then she'd be like, automatically, and she would say, give me, give me your phone, give me your electronics, because last time that happened, she had took my phone, took my computer from me, and she's like, she's like, I'm like, you're in trouble for that. I'm like, oh god. How old are you now? I am 26, turning 27 in about a month. Okay. I think that if you open it up with I want to introduce you guys to my friend and say we met. You can say we met online, but you say he's a gamer too, right? Do you play games together? 
Um, we don't play games together because um, he normally he normally plays different games than I do. He plays like his sports games. I play basically play like um Overwatch or I play like uh Tekken. So it's like it's just like. But he he wants to like get into Overwatch because he saw he's told me he's like you need to teach me how to play Overwatch and I'm like I'm like oh well lucky for you because you got a gamer girlfriend that could help you play that right, game right right <laughs> this might be the kind of situation you know like you know when politicians sometimes like side answer questions yeah that's kind of like right now with me with like my one uh brother he's a he's a republican so and we're democrats so we don't really talk that much stuff to him about that because we don't want him because he got back to talking to my mom mom for a while after like i don't know how like i think a year or so of not talking to her anymore so it's like finally got back to talking to her and we keep telling my um my father because he's the one that always has to talk about like the about like something going on with like the politics and and all this kind of stuff and we tell my dad like don't talk if you see him don't talk to him about any of that right well so okay so 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 you come from a family that understands being diplomatic and understands like choosing your words carefully depending on who you're speaking to yeah so now this is a situation where you're concerned that even though this is someone that you've been seeing, that you've, you've been going out with for years, he's been your boyfriend for years, yeah. and you're worried that you're going to get in trouble if you tell them that you met. Okay. Yeah. If it was me and I was in this situation, I think I would yeah. smilingly say, I have this friend and we talk all the time. And it's getting really nice. And I it's I really would like to introduce you guys to him. We we have this very nice thing. And then they'll say, This friend, who is who are they? How'd you meet them? You could say, We met years ago. We met online years ago. We're both gamers. Okay. <laughs> this is true. Nothing that you are saying is not true. Everything you're saying is we met, we've been talking to each other for a few years already. We met online. We're both gamers. Because yeah, like it basically it is because like my that's all like, true. He has because he, he has told his I think um a friend or I think somebody he's like he's like we've been basically talking like online or whatever. So it's like basically that is the part of the truth. So yeah. And then, and then if like once. They warm up and you could say no. And then, and then if she asks a question, you could say, no, I mean, it's years that we've been talking to each other because we met, we met online. Uh, he's into this. He's like this. He lives in Fresno. He's really nice. He's very polite. He's got, this is his family, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, I've spoken on the phone to his brother. I would have, but I really would like to have him meet you guys. I really like him. I really, you know, and keep it very don't no guilt, no worries, no whatever. And then after they've met, if you want to say, "Mom, you know, it, it, way down the line or whatever, it comes out of it. and you can say, "Mom, how do you think people meet in this day and age?" Because the beginning of the pandemic, I think that there's also a thing where all rules were off. Like the very beginning of the pandemic, everybody had like, a few springs going loose and everybody was feeling lonely and everyone was trying to find ways to reach out because we were all so shut in so yeah I that, think that, that was basically it because like he had been talking to me through the whole pandemic and then he had been um during through the pandemic when my um my grandfather had passed or something he had been through there with me through um the time I was going through being um sad because my my grandparents I used to be so close to them and um when my grandma grandmother died it was way before I met him but when my grandma died I was just a complete and utter mess that I just every time I kept thinking about her seeing pictures of her I just like yeah. would automatically start crying because like me and my grandma were just like so like close like 
like like this i was like <laughs> that with my pods. grandma too i get it i get it like my grandma was the sweetest person ever like every time i used to go to my grandparents house my grandpa would give me my allowance which would be like five seven dollars my grandma would be like how much did your grandpa give you give you i'm like he gave me seven dollars she's like give me the seven i'll give you 20 bucks i'm like okay right. nice oh i love a good grandma oh. okay so i think that if you say if as you're talking and they say how did you meet him how do you we met online we're both gamers we met at the beginning of the pandemic it's been a few years that we're talking he's been a really good friend to me he was really there for me when grandpa passed away He's this really nice guy. He lives in Fresno. I like him a lot. I'd really like for you to meet him. I've been talking to him for years. He's a friend, but I really, I just, I want, I, I think that you guys should meet him. He's important enough to me at this point that I think that you should meet him. We met online. We're both gamers. Yeah, That's how would, I would my mom, handle my it. My mom would believe that because she's like, she's like, she's like, you're a gamer. You're always on your game every single time. I'm like, well. A girl's got a game. That's well. I mean, that's you're you're going to meet people through gaming. That's the nature of having a life online. Is you meet people through gaming. You meet people being online. And I mean, in this day and age, it's very old school to say to your kid, "You can't meet through the apps because the apps, the apps are how you meet." I mean, and so I mean, I, I I've been seeing like teenagers with snapping. Like, I can't even get over. I'm like, who are these billions of people that everyone's talking to? It's, it's I mean, it's it's like the apps, but it's just the communication technology. It's wild. It's freaking, I, all of this would have been unthinkable to me. But because I understand that this is how we connect in this day and age, can't exactly say you can't meet anyone through the apps if you're a gamer. Yeah, because like beforehand, before the apps, it used to be always like, oh, like, I met this person at an anime convention and we've been talking and like I've been like I like kind of like liking them as like as a friend but I think I want to kind of be more than friends right. and like that's how like they've gotten through that way right right we've been talking for years he's been an amazingly good friend to me we started talking at the beginning of the pandemic we met online we're both gamers He's really special. I really just want you to meet him because he's important to me. I would leave it at that. Yeah, because like my would... my my two friends, my two my two best friends, my one friend from high school, my one friend from college. She's not here now because she's over in Japan visiting her grandma. But I I talk to her nice. time, okay whenever I can. <laughs> but yeah. um, those two have been my um kind of like my support like rocks because they're my best friends and they've been through like all the times that I've had relationships either I've gotten in the relationship gotten out of it like they would basically just talk to me and just like like say like like oh like if I broke up with somebody they're like oh well it's his loss he didn't know that you were kind and sweet and whatever yeah and all that and like them seeing me now happy and and just like overall wanting to see my like my future basically down the road with him and just they'd be like they'd be like we support you guys because i they're like we love to see you happy that's the only thing we want to make sure is that you are happy and that you have somebody that loves you and they're happy yeah. to be with you so it's like but it's i'm like, sure that your mother and your brother feel the same way they're just being protective of you you know, they're looking out for you. But meanwhile, you've taken very good care of yourself. And it sounds like you met someone who's very nice and who's worthy of your time right now, who's somebody who's like kind and good. And I'm happy that you've met someone who's been so good to you through this crazy time in the world. And that's yeah, so nice. That's so lucky. Yeah, it's like basically if, any, if either him or I, any I know one of us have a bad day. We text each other and we always say like, like, be like, be like, it's okay. Just know I'm here. I love you and, and all that. And so it's like basically makes either one of us feel better when we tell each other that. That's fabulous. That's great. That's really nice. I think you got this, Amanda. 
I really do. I think you got this. And I don't know if you're even noticing it, but you're like, every time you talk about him, you're beaming, you're smiling. You're so I think that if you talk about him like that and refer to him as your friend, but say that you've been talking for years and how, what a good friend he's been and how just what a nice guy. And you can give him a few, a few nice personal details about him. Met online. We're both gamers. We've been talking. He's important to me. So I really would like you to meet him. I, I don't think there's anything to object to here. I think there's nothing to object to. Really? Really? It's not like you're I, out. I didn't, like, even, I didn't even tell him I was going to be on here and telling him, telling him, like, I'm going to go on a stream, like a stream thing and be on there. And I'm just going to be asking you a question about, like, how to help me out, kind of with like me telling my mom about you. And yeah. That like, is I definitely what I, I, I didn't would tell, do. I didn't tell him that, that today, but later when I talk to him after he gets, because he's in um, he's in college right now. So he's in class right now. But as soon as he pops out and um, at like five something, he'll like, I'll, uh, he'll call me and I'll tell him, be like, hey, guess what I did? He's like, what'd you do? I'm like, I went on, um, on, on the stream and because he knows I love Overwatch so I'm like I'm like I went on to um Jen Cohn she's the voice for Farah I went on her thing and I asked her a question to kind of help me out with the how to help me kind of introduce you to my family I think it's gonna work too I think it's gonna work I think you're gonna do great I think it'll be great I'm hoping so. Crossing my fingers. I think it's going to be great. <laughs> Expect for it to be great. I think I think that it's very sincere, and it sounds like he's a very good guy. So, yeah, he is a very good guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I guess, like I, I told him over the phone today. I told him I said I'm like, I'm like, if anybody were to ask me about our relationship, they'd be like, be like, oh, you guys kind of make make basically maybe be like the sappy romantic kind of couple and I would I would tell him be like I don't care I'm fine with it right right you're like it's okay to be a sappy romantic couple it's fine <laughs> definitely I think this is gonna go great I think they're gonna be very happy for you I think they're gonna be excited for you I'm hoping <laughs> I think so will you let me know I will let you know okay in the discord please in the discord let us know how it goes because I want to okay. hear it. I want to hear the the aftermath. Yeah, I think I really think this is going to go great. I think that this is going to be good. I, I think should tell you. I should tell you the one thing. You, uh, a friend of mine in college. She's the one that kind of got me into Overwatch. So I thank her for doing that because, like, that's how I kind of got into the hobby of the game and learning all the voice actors and actresses. So I'm just like, I'm just like. Thank you for the wonderful gift of like introducing me into something good because it's like I have met like like I have met like um so many new people like I always play with on on like through the game and like I always talk with them and they they always friend me and I'm thinking I'm like yeah like like go ahead and friend me I'm like we can play together it's like I'm fine with it because like I'm always on my 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 PlayStation whenever I can yeah yeah you know this is the beauty of the discord too like lots of people I love when people connect and become friends through all of these spaces it's like it's very special it's really special and then I'm so happy to get to talk to you thank you oh my god I was gonna say like if I had time I was gonna say like I, I would wish to show you like all the overwatch stuff I have because like I have so much overwatch stuff that's so awesome. That's, you know what? And on another one, you'll show, we'll have to do some sort of like art show. Oh, I should put that over there. I have a tracer up on the wall. Fabulous. <laughs> Gotta love a tracer. That's so good. No, Thank you so the, much. Love. Wait. Oh, nice. <laughs> awesome. I have so much stuff and I have cosplayed as Mercy before. So <laughs> she's my girl. She's my girl. She's coming over for Passover. <laughs> oh that's it. awesome because like coming from always my over. always my dream is to always meet her and I always want to like say I'm like I always try to like tell like in my mind I, I always like tell myself I'm like please God ever a time there's a con in California please let one of them 
anybody from Overwatch come to a con here in California. Yay! Please. I know we got to come back. I know it's been a bit. I yeah, know. I think last, I think last time I had heard, heard you go to Sac Anime, and I wanted to go, and I told my mom, I was like, "Mom, can I go to Sac Anime?" She's like, "No, you're not going." And I got sad because you I and- had fun at Sac Anime. That was a great <laughs> one. Like. Cause like you and somebody else are all there and I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm like, I can't go. What the heck? I wanted to meet them. There's always I, another con. They, there, I, there will be more. I had, Cause I had already met, met Lucio and Torb already. Love. So <laughs> that was kind of like, like my star light right there. Be like, I have met two people from Overwatch. That is my accomplishment right there. Keep meeting more of them and just like talking to them. It's like, I don't care if it's through like, like, in person or like just getting noticed through them from their social media stuff or anything and if them noticing me and be like hi or or talk or like whatever they just be like i am starstruck <laughs> well now you've met three now we're official perfect yeah, i'm like- sending you a hug please let me know in the discord how it goes and if you want to share your swag there too please do okay okay <laughs> great Mwah, have a good one Thank so you, nice Jim, to meet you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great one. I'm sending you love back. Have a great day. Good luck. I want I want to hear what happens. Hey, thank you, Jen. I love you too. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Nespa, did I ever tell you the story of uh are you there? I don't know if you're Nest. Did I ever tell you the story of when I met a guy who I dated through a wrong phone number? No, this was so, this was crazy. So, you know, this is like a long going joke of mine is that Jen Cohn is like the John Smith of Jewish girls. Like they're, you know, usually it's C-O-H-E-N, but like there are billions of Jen Cohn, Jen Cohen, some variation of it. And when I was in college, uh, when I, I did on the other stream where I talked about when I was uh, at doing the, the thing at Cheers, where I was, I was the, the, the greeter, the, the crowd control person at Cheers, um, that summer, I get a call from a guy named Josh Kaufman, and he picks up and launches right into conversation with me. And now, like... If a guy named Josh Kaufman calls me, I totally assume I must know him, whether we like we must be family friends or I know him from sleepaway camp or I must know him from elementary school or I must know him from the summer in Fire Island or I'm like so I just totally launch into conversation with this guy like we know each other and we proceed to have this like really fun rollicking conversation and at a certain point like he makes a reference that I don't know what it is. And I just sort of like gloss over it. And then I make a reference. He doesn't know what it is and we gloss over it. And I don't know, maybe we're like 45 minutes into this conversation when he says something about, wait, I'm sorry. You don't know what I'm talking about. And I'm like, no. He goes, this is Jen Cohn, right? I go, yeah, this is Jen Cohn. So is this Jen Cohn from Gainesville, Florida? I'm like, no not he was his mother had asked him to call her friend's daughter who had just started grad school in Boston uh who was another Jen Cohn and so back then when you called people you would call information you'd call 411 and ask for a phone number and so when he asked for Jen Cohn's phone number he got my number and called me and I, because I launched right into conversation, he assumed that I was that Gen Con. Anyway, he was this adorable, lovely, sweet doctor, like young. And we dated for like three, four months after that. He showed up at Cheers with flowers and we met through a wrong phone number. It was the craziest thing, I'm just thinking. You know, this is not the typical way of how like uh, you're supposed to start dating someone, but he was lovely. He was so, so nice. And then we we split up because it like 
you know, at that age, that age difference was a little much, I think, for both of us. So we we didn't continue dating. And he was just he was a doll. He was it was all legal and fun, but it was it was still, you know, we were slightly different places. But ah, oh, what a nice, nice guy. So funny. Ah. Oh. Yeah, crazy ways that we meet people. Wait, I'm gonna see what's going on in the chat for a sec, and then we're gonna move on. Hold on. Hi, Khalid. Hello, hello. Hello, Rachel. Nice to see you. Hi. Hello. Hi, Love Games. Hello, Ken May Art. Space Jesus Star Wars. Get good. Good name. Bro, Faras are so annoying to play against. That is true. Adam, Adam, thank you. So nice. Yeah, I think that they will be happy for her. I think that soon they're going to. Happy birthday, Osama. Absolutely. Um, I am a terrible Overwatch player, but when I play, I try to play Farah, and more often than not, I play Junkrat. I love Junkrat. Junkrat's amazing. You're out of here, Lumi. Mwah, mwah. Bye. I hope you're good. Have a good night. Bye. Yeah, it was very funny, Junker GF. It was very funny. Yeah, he was a doll. I should look him up. I have no idea what he's doing now. He was a great cook. He made all this like New Orleans style stuff. He was real. He was lovely. Such a nice guy. Yeah. Wrong phone number. Yeah. I'm sure my mother would not have been thrilled if I told her that I was going on a date with a guy who called me and had the wrong phone number. Like, uh, yeah, he was great. So nice. All right. Wait, you usually, wait, over 900 hours on break. Good going. My gosh. Outrageous. All right. Nine new messages. Oh, thank you, X6P. So nice. KKDJJ, thank you. So nice. Love, Abe. Yeah, it was a meet cute. It was fantastic. Yes, yeah, so funny. I don't know if you ever met him, Riss. He was great. Josh, uh, Josh Kaufman. Oh, so nice. All right. Okay. We have now, this is so sweet. We have my buddy Ezra's coming on. I'm so excited. Ah, oh, here we go. Here we go. Hi, I'm Jenny. Hello, how are you, Ez? How's I'm it doing going? Great. <laughs> I saw Ezra for the first time in a billion years this past weekend it's way uh, too long. at Ezra's uncle's record release party yeah so it, it's very nice so we got to catch up i got to catch up with him and his brother and his cousins and the whole gang it was really nice it was very nice it was I great seeing you guys you. it was so great to see you too and those pictures we took are fantastic have you got them has, has uh, yeah your sent mom them sent them to me they were great. terrific they're so know, so they're good amazing yeah, of you and of your bro. They're fantastic. Yeah. They're really good. The 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 record release party was being held at this art gallery that, guys, I didn't know this at all. Like, I don't know, those of you who are into pop art or are into, like, graffiti art, but Keith Haring, who's, like, a legend and a household name in that world, Keith Haring, at around age 30, took on this 15-year-old mentee, like, this graffiti artist kid who lived up in the Bronx, I think. And not only was was he did he mentor this kid, this kid was the one who influenced Keith Haring to learn how to do the graffiti style that he ended up making famous. Like, so like I had no idea this kid was doing this style graffiti. And Keith Haring, who was doing all other sorts of stuff, but never had done this style graffiti, was like, dude, what are you doing? And this kid taught Keith Haring how to make like the crazy figure style, like the interlocking figure style graffiti art. And this kid collaborated with Keith Haring on the famous crack is whack mural. That was like this massive mural that was in New York for many, many years. They've actually recreated it. Um, unbeknownst to me, I had no idea that there was this like wild mentor muse mentee relationship that happened anyway this gallery represents the the kid who's now an, an older guy now and he does all of these paintings that are the style that were the inspiration for Keith Haring like if you were to see them you would think that they were Keith Haring knockoffs 
but they're actually, he's the guy who showed Keith Haring how to work like this. So we have all of LA these. too, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's in LA now. And so we have all these pictures of, of us in front of these fabulous graffiti paintings. They're like, they're amazing. I was so obsessed. They were really good. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. Really impressive. Tell us what's going on, honey. So yeah, so I'm starting college very soon. And I'm not sure what am I, like what friends of mine are going to be there. So I know you and my mom met around that age, that high school, college time. How do you guys meet and how can I meet other people? Oh my God, it's the best precipice, Ezra. It seriously is the best, best precipice. The way I met your mother is a hilarious, ridiculous, unrelated story. And I'm happy to tell you that crazy story. Um, but I'll tell, but I'm going to say this first before I say that. Yeah. I, the only person I knew, so, so your mother is a few years older than I am. And so she was already at our college when I got there. I had met your mom in high school because the subject that had intergrade class was French. And so your mom was in my French class and your mom was like incredibly cool rock star, like Doc oh, yeah. Martin side shaved, like hot as shit. Like, so she was, she was just incredibly like punky, badass. Artsy, really cool. Full on, yeah. full on. And I'm like a freshman, like coming in and she's like this wildly cool girl in my French class. And, uh, I'm a little intimidated by her at this time because she's, she's just that cool. And our, I, I had always been a great French student. Like I, I always sort of took to French very quickly and yeah. I was able to like, I picked up the speaking part, the spoke, like my writing was eh, but my spoken was really good. And one of our first assignments in this class was we all had to write an essay about our home life, you know, in our, in our like, not great French. And your mother gets up and I, I'm not going to go through all the details, but your mother gets up in this like inimitable, very cute way with her essay in her boots, you know, and she gets up and in the worst French accent possible, proceed and smiling between lines, proceeds to read this essay about how she lives in an apartment where she's like basically in a threesome with these two men who like tie her up and like they untie her to feed her her breakfast and then one of them gets her dressed and so she makes up this outrageous like filthy story that she's reading <laughs> in terrible French with the worst French accent imaginable and this is in high school yeah. and no one else in the class is following the story, but I am hanging on every word she is saying and I believe everything she's saying and my jaw is falling farther and farther. And my eyes are getting wider and wider and she's like, you know, a hey, Louis, il s'appelle, you know, but a hey, après, il, you know, and, I, and I'm just, and she gets to the point in the story where it's like time to go to bed and somebody is like undressing her. And our teacher goes, Marisa, Marisa, you have to, you know, stop, go to the principal. Like she, like she goes nuts. Our teacher, Madame Guidra Frank, I'm like, oh my God, she's like some kind of sex slave or something. I don't even, I have no idea. I'm like, oh my God, it's so crazy. I asked to go to the bathroom to go like, you know, see if I'm going to see her in the hall or something. I go into the bathroom and she's in the bathroom. I'm like, oh my God, are you okay? Like, is everything? And she looks at me like I am a moron. Like I'm, and she's like, it was a joke. I joke. And I'm like, oh my God, my mind was blown completely. But that was how we became friends. That That's was like, so funny. that was the beginning of our relationship. And then she was at our college when I applied. And so I remember going on the tour with my father and I didn't realize that she was there, but I walked into a classroom that they opened the door and who is there? Your fabulous mother. And I'm like, oh my God. And so she grabs me by the hand and leaves my tour waiting in the hall. 
and trots me around the building to like show me things while they all have to wait. So I was very, very excited. Um, but other than your mother, I didn't know anyone at college. And she was a couple of grades old, grades ahead of me. So what I loved about this was it was an opportunity to be whoever I wanted to be. Yeah. And that's the great thing about going to college in an unknown place, not necessarily with your friends, not it's this it's this new opportunity to be exactly who you want to be and choose like there's no backstory except for what you want and who you choose what you choose to attach to it's such an exciting precipice it's so oh my god it's like thrilling it's really cool are you are you feeling like are you feeling nervous about it are you feeling yeah, I mean, there's gonna be so many people there. And I feel like beyond my friends, I'm gonna have to find other people. And I feel like it's gonna be kind of difficult because there's gonna be a lot of people there. It's a big college. But everybody is gonna be looking to meet new people. Like all of these people, that's a nice thing about being that age is you're like extra open and all of this opportunity is right there and everyone understands that. Oh yeah. Like the like the rules of engagement are different and college is different in that like you're getting to choose where you are like you've chosen to go to that school it's not like you got stuck somewhere so it's true yeah you get to choose your people you get to choose your classes it's different than like i mean I'm, in high school you're just sort of thrown in with whoever you're thrown in with but in college you're choosing your path it's it, i found it a lot i found it really exciting and and while initially a little scary there's this opportunity to like have meetings of the minds and have eyes meet across a crowded room and suddenly click with somebody new because of your interests yeah like i'm gonna be able to choose my classes and be with people who are like me and because of that meeting new people should come relatively easy but still that like factor i don't know these people I'm going to have to meet them and introduce. It's like a fresh start. You're going to be so good at this. Like knowing you, you're going to be great at this. Like you're so self-possessed. You're very good in your skin. I think it's just a matter of like trusting yourself and staying inside of your own eyes. Like, you know, there's that thing where sometimes when you meet people or when you do something and you're only concerned about what those people are seeing, like you're outside of yourself judging yourself if you can keep from doing that and stay in your own body and stay in yourself and just make it about huh what do i think does that person click with me is that someone interesting and just be kind to yourself and make space for yourself i think you're gonna do great and yeah. be open be open to like I don't know, going, you know, to check out, going to a party, going to somebody's room, going to a, you know, to a bar or a dinner or whatever, wherever it is that everyone's going. If everyone's going to skateboard, if everyone's going to the beach, if wherever they might go, oh, wait, I want to see, hold on a second. What's Andromeda saying? It's also important to remember that just like you're nervous about finding friends, everyone is exactly and finding their group well, but welcoming the awkwardness and using it as a tool. That is very good advice. Yeah. As well as like bringing that confidence to show people like, Hey, I'm ready to meet people so that maybe people come to you. Definitely. And well, definitely. Because you radiate that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, lo I love, that's really good advice. Andromeda. That was really good. Yeah. Leaning into it and leaning into who you are. I mean, this is an opportunity to just be really good with who you are and know that other people are having the same experience as you. I remember my first night of orientation was, I remember being very nervous that night. You know, that I, I remember feeling like, oh. but then after that, like sort of diving in and within that week, I mean, I just this weekend saw a, uh, one of my best friends in the world who I saw the morning before I saw you 
she's in from Los Angeles. And I met her on the orientation bus that next morning. Wow. So yeah. So funny. Do you have like so funny. areas that you can recommend to find people? Like different types of places? That's the cool thing about college. You're going to meet people everywhere. You're going to meet people in the hall. You're going to meet people in your classes. You're going to meet people waiting outside. You're going to meet people in the cafeteria. You're going to meet people in on like at the sandwich place on campus. You're going to meet people playing hacky sack or playing frisbee or skateboarding outside. I mean, it's it, there. It's so open. It's oh, college there are openings to introduce yourself and to meet people that are that are just in terms of like points of entry easier than you'll find or at least you know if you can get used to just sort of these points of entry you'll get very good at it in future places and just feel just be bold and say yeah. hi to people we have to remember like a lot of people are being like, oh my God, look at him. I want to talk to him. How do I talk to him? So if you're the one who goes up and says, hi, yeah. Pop the exact common dorm area. Absolutely. Oh, right. You're starting in September too. It's going to be great. Oh my God, guys, it's so much fun. And, you know, usually in the beginning in orientation, your college or your university will have spe like events set up where it's sort of designed for it to be easy for you to meet people. Usually it's the beginning of like the clubs or the, the beginning of like certain courses of study where you're sort of thrown into groups with people who have the same interests as you. So it's designed for you to interact with people and start talking. You're gonna be great. Now somebody's asking, I don't, I don't know if you see, they're asking, uh, what, are you, wait, what are you going to, you need to study. What we do you wanna do study? Computer engineering, I wanna be a software engineer. Amazing. Yeah gonna do great as you're gonna do so well mm. and like even like by us there's like a lot of concert venues that like i can go to concerts like with my friends already and meet people there you can yeah. meet people there and who knows I mean, if it's right by the school they probably are going to be students or there's going to be a bunch of students who's there who are there or you might recognize recognize someone in class who was someone that you saw at the concert yeah i didn't see at the concert like that's that's really fun they're going to be like the places to eat on campus. And that's where you run into people. Yeah. There's, is there a sport? Is there a, a sports team? Um, I think they have, they're not like D1. I think they might have some D3 sports. I, so like I, I had never been to one of those like giant football games at like one of those kinds of schools. I'd never done that before. I just did my first one this past fall. I couldn't even believe it. It was like the entire town the entire it was madison wisconsin the entire city was in service to the football game that's amazing so, while obviously it's not that if there's a sports event there are going to be like a bunch of people congregating in places and that that's always like a time they're going to be frat parties they're going to be like other weird social cool thing parties there's gonna it's you're gonna do yeah. great just like going to events that people throw in general. Yes. Yes. No, events galore. Oh, wait, look at this. Junker GF is also wants to start in computers. Both of you. You're worried because you'll be older than everyone else. 28. It doesn't matter. Honestly, in college, it doesn't matter at all. Or university. Like you, if you're anywhere, if you're there, you're there to meet and to learn and to be open. So don't be self-conscious about that at all. I, I made friends who are older. I made friends who are grad students. Like there's a real, there's a real openness in college that way. It's not limited. It's not like being in, in elementary school or middle school or high school where it's like stick to your grade. There's like none of that at all. Oh, you're going to cook this nice. All right. Oh, wait, here's another one. My freshman year, I literally hung out in my common area, built my room to be a super cool hangout space for friends, and then just left my door open and friends poured in. Freshmen are so anxious to make friends that the moment there's an open door, the moment they see an in, they often will take it. It is true. Very sound advice, Andromeda. Good work. Yes, I love that. Ah, love rains from above for you too. So nice.
Oh, clubs are great places. That was good advice that the clubs are good ones. Yeah, there's a lot of clubs around us. Oh, like so you're Asbury do Park. Great, honey. So much stuff there. Oh, it's Asbury's the coolest. You'll meet people at the beach. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're going to do gangbusters. You're totally going to do gangbusters. All right, my totally. Ez, will you let me know how it goes? I will. And, and I hope I see you very soon. I hope I, we totally. have to have a family get together. I know. want to see Mickey again. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no, we Rob, need to get a, a family, a family gang gathering. Yeah, totally. Um, I'm sending you love. Give your fabulous rock star mother a kiss for me. I will. And, and your your rock star skater surfer father a kiss for me too. I and hope uh, your Passover goes great. Thank you. Yours too. Thank you. Thank you. Yours too. Mwah. Be good, honey. Take care. Bye, Aunt Jenny. Bye. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye bye. Ah, so nice. I love it. It's my freshman year of college. Oh my god, it was so exciting. It was so exciting. God, I met like so many of my key people in my life. I met that first year. Like, you know, there are certain points in your life where you meet a handful of people who you keep. That for that year, there were like a handful of people. I've got my college people. Oh, so good. Love talking to you too, my Ezra. Absolutely. Ezra is a lovely person. Ezra is an absolutely lovely person, like a warm, grounded, nice, kind, handsome. Yeah, the whole the whole package. Agreed. Uh, I was I was a, a theater major. I got my BFA in acting, and then I also uh, studied uh, philosophy and modern art. <laughs> so, a very useful degree. I'm like one of the very few people who actually went into their field of study who was an arts major it was very that I actually became an actor it was like wow it's pretty great it worked it was really fun I had a great time I loved I loved my school I loved our school it was so great uh, Ezra's mother has been a friend of mine for all of these years and actually Ezra's aunts as well so I was between the sisters' ages. There are three sisters, and I just fell in between sister the ages of sisters two and three. So I managed to independently befriend all three of them. And so I have like these wonderful relationships with all three of them independently. And it's so, so nice. And I got to see all of them at the record release party. So it was just awesome. It was really great. Yeah. I love when the chickens come home to roost. So nice. Wait, I want to see. Oh my God, you need a like, wrist. It was the best story ever. So wrist is here. Yeah, that was the best, best story. That was, that was how we met. Yeah, I, my jaw had to be like wired back in when I realized that she was, she was shitting on the class's head. And the poor teacher, the teacher had these very buggy eyes. She was this older French woman with these buggy eyes and you were just watching, they were like bugging and bugging and but you thought like when she got to this point in the story they were just fall onto the desk she was just yeah and that's when she started screaming it was great <laughs> that's how we met that's how we met so fun ah uh, you main farah thank you thank you thank you no i'm i'm traveling for the rest of the month i'm going to be in japan i'm going to be in vietnam i'm going to be traveling all over the place. Hello, I am good, thank you. How are you doing, Sombra's girlfriend? That's so nice. All right, I have to get to my gefilte fish cooking. But before I get to it, I had one more thing I wanted to say. And it actually pulls us full circle because it kind of pulls us back to the point of Emily, our first caller today, her conversation with us about where you place your attention. You know, for those of you guys who are in the US, we're at a very strange moment where crazy things are happening in our country with a certain former president. And I am having the experience of like all of the news cycle and all of the headlines and all of the everything is being like, sucked back into that vortex. And you know, from 
2016 until he left office, that that was always the focus of like all the air in the room was constantly being sucked out and you were sort of a slave to this news cycle. And it was, there was sort of a sigh of relief of not being a slave to this crazy carnival news cycle circus in the ensuing years. And so I wanted to say to everybody, no matter where you're at on this issue, no matter how you feel, no matter what you're up to, you don't have to be a slave to this news cycle. You can choose where to keep your attention. You do not owe current events your undivided attention. You do not owe the chaos that's happening your full focus. You get to continue to focus on yourself and your life and what you want your things to be and where you want things to go. I'm not telling you to stick your head in the sand and I'm not saying to pull an ostrich act, but if there's a lesson we can take from the last batch of years, it's that we get to choose what we want to focus on right now. And we can choose not to focus somewhere where it doesn't help us. Just my two cents, just my words to you going into this week. All right. Happy Passover. The power of unplugging. Exactly. Happy Passover. I am sending you guys so much love. Happy Easter. Happy April. Join the Discord if you haven't joined the Discord. I will be letting you know when I'm doing these AMAs from Asia. I'll be doing videos from Asia as well. So I'll be posting all that stuff stuff on TikTok and on Instagram. If you aren't following me everywhere, do it. I am at Hey, it's Jen Cohn at all the places. And again, the discord is where I will give you some notice about what I'm planning to do. Um, and I'll be back doing bird moms weekly in May. So it'll still be on Mondays at five. And I will let you know when that schedule starts. And if you have something that you want to talk through, just get on the discord, let Ness Ness No, Ness, my amazing producer extraordinaire. Nessbot, thank you for your help tonight. Abe, mwah, I'm so sorry you're not feeling great. I'm sending you love and I hope that you feel better and thank you for pulling it out and helping for tonight and being my, my amazing TikTok mod. Um, I'm sending you guys all so much love. Mwah. Yeah, take your meds on time and take stronger ones in it. Yes, true. Happiest Passover to everybody. Uh, see you on the other side of the world. Very excited. Mwah. I got to go cook. All right. Love you guys. Have a good night. Have a great, a great week. Happy holiday week. Bye. Thanks guys. Uh,